Welcome viewers to Kirby Freak 33's tips, tricks, and ticks of Dungeoneering. Now in this video I'm going to give you a few little little tips that have helped me out with getting used to Dungeoneering, either maximizing experience or just having a whole lot of fun, of course. And I'll also talk about a few things that have been bothering me that I'd like you guys to know about as well that you probably should be careful not to do so you don't annoy your fellow party members. Now, as you can see, I'm nowhere near Demonheim, so I'm not. This video is mainly going to involve images from the RuneScape website. So, I'm. Um, let's start out with the very first thing that a whole lot of people seem to complain a whole lot about. Ugh, a whole lot of people seem to have complained about, and that is the system of prestige. Now, the prestige system is actually pretty simple once you actually get used to it, but beforehand, it can be quite up to understand. Now, when you're trying to maximize your experience when you're going when you're crashing through Demonheim, you need to you really want to make sure that your prestige is as high as you can possibly make it. Now, what prestige is is that it is a system where you can get a special bonus of experience whenever you do a floor for the first time. Now, while this seems like it may not actually be very useful as once you've done a floor once you technically can't ne can never do it again, there's a function called the reset button that will allow you to reset the floors that you have done, allowing you to access any floor that you have already unlocked, but with your newest prestige bonus. But before I get to the uses of the reset button, I'm going to talk about prestige more. Now, when you when you're taking care of your resetting, sorry about that. When you're taking care of completing dungeons, you want to try to complete every single one that you have act, that you have um, taken care of so far. I'm just highlighting that window there. And you really, will, you'll find that if you keep going through dungeons that you've not gone through before, then you will get actual not too bad amount, not too bad amounts of experience for each dungeon. But if you keep going through the same dungeon over and over again, your prestige bonus will be zero, so your base experience total will be halved. And trust me, you do not want halved experience. Now, how do you maximize your prestige, though? Once every time you complete a floor that you haven't completed yet on your current run, you will gain one prestige. And this prestige, like I said, is used for the experience bonuses. I, pref I usually like going through each floor one straight from one all the way through one at a time. Yes, it takes a long time, but the experience you get adds up. Now, of course, you will obviously find that after a while you will not be able to access all of the floor access any more floors that you haven't already completed because your level isn't high enough and you still have a good bit of experience to go. Now this is where the reset button comes in. When you click the reset button, the amount, like I said, the amount of floors that you've completed turns to zero so you can complete all the floors over again with the, with the prestige bonus, but your prestige is set to the previous, to the value of the previous number of floors you have completed in your in your previous run before you press the reset button. The reset button. Now, this does not mean that you can go through floor one two million times and get two million prestige. I'm talking about floors that you've completed in terms of whether it's floor one, two, three, four, five. Like I, I think I can now complete up to floor 28, and I've done that. So my prestige, if I were to reset, will be set to 28. But I can go through all of the previous floors with 28 prestige. And this prestige bonus really helps because if you're going in parties especially, you can get a whole ton of experience. Like, I love going through large dungeons and on a on only like floor five or six with a 20 prestige bonus, I managed to rack up a whopping 10,000 experience, which is a whole lot for I can't remember what floor I said because I have a terrible memory. But anyway, so here's if you don't want to try to remember everything about how the prestige system works. Think of it this way, if you must complete every single floor that you possibly can once to get your prestige and to get your prestige up. Once you have completed every floor you possibly can, or on the little um, window here, once every single floor that you see is marked with a check mark, then, then you reset. But if there is a single floor that you have not completed yet on your current run, do not reset, complete that floor first. And whatever you do, don't reset, like, after you've done two floors. That's happened to a few friends of mine, and they don't know why they only have two prestige now when they used to have 20. Only reset once you have completed every floor you possibly can. And then go through every floor once again, 
and rack up your prestige for those. Reset again, lather, rinse, repeat until you're level 120 to engineering or you're bored. So that's basically my little tip on how to understand the prestige system. Now I'm going to move on to my next section, well I just said the same window there. My next section will be on maximizing experience total, and of course I'll be talking about this window here. The prestige bonus, as you can see, I don't, floor 3 with a prestige 3, prestige like this usually won't actually give you that much of a bonus, or at least I don't think it will anyway. But either way, you can see how prestige can really affect your average score. Sorry you can't see my cursor, but if you just look at the window, you'll see that floor 3 is 106, but then the prestige gets them 3,046 experience, allowing for an average of 1,576, which is much bigger than the previous floor 3 base bonus of 106. Or the or the floor three more than once time, aka prestige zero, of fifty of fifty eight experience. Now, if you have the time, you want to do a large dungeon. Large dungeons will give you a ton of experience. They will give you an extra sixteen, I think sixteen percent bonus. And well, that's a lot considering even though the dungeon takes a long time, it will actually give you a better rate than if you were to do the same time worth amount of dungeons of a smaller size. Now you also want to go through every single bonus room you possibly can. And if that means you have to keep running around and making herbs and making potions to go into those rooms, do it anyway. You want the experience, especially once you're at high, when you're at high amounts, when 1% can mean an extra 100 or 200 experience. Try to keep the difficulty as high as you think your party can do it. Most of the groups I have joined are all quite combat heavy as well as skill heavy, so we always take on the largest difficulty we possibly can. The level mod means that you have to, you want to kill every monster you find, and this does not count for Mastixes. I'll talk about those later, probably in my next video. Now, what the level mod is, is that the level mod can go down as much to as negative 25% mul multiplier. If you don't, if you refuse to kill a whole, whole lot of monsters in the dungeon, you want to kill monsters in this in dungeoneering. No matter how much you want to think that dungeoneering might not be completely combat focused, it's still combat focused. Kill monsters, and you can get up to the 10% level mod multiplier. And if you don't, well, you're in for a nasty surprise when you look at your experience screen. People, do Complexity 6. Complexity 6 means that you don't have a single negative multiplier on your experience whatsoever. And per I actually love Complexity 6 myself, because I love making things right from the start, as well as my bound items of a Promethean Plate Body <laughs> and a Grave Creeper Longbow. And Guide Mode, you really... It eliminates the... It really doesn't only give you the minus 4% bonus or whatever it is. Sometimes sometimes seems to change between four, negative 4 and negative 6. Not only does it give you that, but it also eliminates your your chance of getting bonus rooms, or at least it like lowers your idea of doing it in the first place, of getting bonus rooms. So you won't get any bonus rooms, so you'll really lose like negative. You'll really get like a negative 17% multiplier. Now, of course, the obvious one is don't die. I know it's sometimes unavoidable, but try not to have silly deaths when you can, if you can help it. If you're low on health, eat food. If you want, if one of your party members is low on health, use food on them to to heal. I'm sorry, use food on them so they can get healed. You really like if they don't have any food left, don't just laugh at them for dying. Heal them because then later they might end up healing you and saving your ass at the same time. So, if you follow what I've just said, then you should probably be fine. And also, go in like a lar the largest party you can possibly handle, both mentally and physically. So that way, having larger parties also ups your base experience, which means having a higher multiplier can get you more total experience as well. My highest amount of experience I've ever gotten from a dungeon was from, I think, like a floor 26 five-person run on a large dungeon with the maximum difficulty. I got like 17,000 experience. So, yeah. Do large dungeons. Go through bonus rooms. Maximize your difficulty. Kill every monster. Don't use guide mode and maximize your complexity. And also, yeah, um, so before I go to my next video, I'm going to start with one of the ticks that I have. And when I mean tick, when I say tick, I mean things that really tick me off, piss me off, annoy me. Um, this is actually is a pretty small one. Just, I usually like to ask my party members what difficulty they have set the dungeon to. Now, 
when I say difficulty, I mean the ratio that, that they have. The one that has, you know, the where on the screen here it says 1 to 1 and gives you 0% bonus. But people seem to always think that I'm talking about complexity. If I wanted to say complexity, I would say complexity. Difficulty is different than complexity. Difficulty is how many people the dungeon is designed for, not how complex the dungeon is. So I really like it if I could see more people who actually understand what I mean when I say when I'm talking about difficulty. Anyway, I'll talk about my I'll talk about more tips, tricks, and ticks in my next video because right now I am out of time. So I'll see you guys then.